Love podcasts, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Show podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Dudes rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right, no script. <laughs> No labour. You thought we were going to do the Labour Manifesto today, you fucking neeks. No, I'm going to read this 1988 edition of Shoot magazine. Anything in there? What's the news, Ed? What's, <laughs> what's the news? Uh, no stopping Sunis. Britain's <laughs> best on Graham's hit list. When he was Rangers manager. He wants to sign Stuart Pearce. Hold Gordon that. Jury? Hold that up. Let me. I think we've realised your moustache in Spo. <laughs> Graham Sunnis <laughs> That's right Me and Graham Sunnis Do you know what's quite funny about This like shows the, How far Scottish football has fallen Or like the soullessness of English football Come on so no, look, You're going to beat Germany Post Bosman In what like So this is the equivalent of like Match magazine I guess In the 80s hmm. Imagine if you're a child buying Match magazine And you're like Oh I wonder what poster I'm going to get Dundee United. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone would be particularly happy with that. They just want a we, Saudi Arabian Pro League team. Do we know Dundonians? Do we know? I'd know some Dundonians. Stephen, Stephen Flynn's Dundonian, isn't he? He's supposed to be United. Pretty that sure. That would make sense then. Yeah. That, would, that, that, that scans. No, it does. Yeah. Maybe he wants that. We'll offer that to him next time he's in. He'd probably quite I don't like know, that. I don't know if it's in our gift to give him, to be fair. Oh, I think we can do what we want. Uh, this, is our, this is our domain, Edward. I said it's Paul. Uh, excuse me, that's Football Joe's domain. What if they gave away one of your books? Tanks on their lawn. Uh, if, what, if, <laughs> what if they gave like a James O'Brien book to somebody? You'd be. I'd never recover. You'd be furious. I'd be, I, I would be livid. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> what do you mean? If they took away the greatest living writer in the English language from me, I'd be devastated. Uh, you know, like some people will read Shakespeare. Like Brian Moore used to play, read Shakespeare before he like got out and played rugby for England. Yeah. You just flick, flick, flick through How to Be Right <laughs> before doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Reform Ed. Mm. And I mean reform, comma, Ed. Not as in he is reform Ed. Yes, because well, you don't you don't speak like that anyway. No, so but I just wanted card. I just wanted to be clear. If anyone from the 15th century was listening, <laughs> <laughs> we're actually quite big in Middle England. That's good. The Middle Ages, yeah. Um, past the Tories, yeah. In new gov polling, within the margin of error, it must be said. Yeah, but I mean, should they be within the margin of error? Probably not. No, <laughs> that's also notable, I suppose. <laughs> Um, I mean, we've. I feel like we spoke about it. We've spoken about it already. So we won't spend too much time on it, but it was forecast for this week, wasn't it? It was expected, and and it's happened. It's happened. You see Farage uh, listening to Eminem in his car this morning. Was he? Guess who's back? Back again. That's the thing. He's, the thing about Farage is he's just so epic. <laughs> he's actually just a cool, chill dude. <laughs> Um, I don't know if he made it far enough through the debate on ITV last night, but he did have some funny moments. Did he? Yeah. What was he doing? They were talking about dependence um, on like student visas. And he was like, I'm sorry, but if you come to Britain to go to uni, don't bring your mum. And I think that's fair, to be honest with you. <laughs> Obviously, the dependence line extends to, you know, some people might have children. I'd be curious to see the numbers of people bringing their mums. Yeah, I wonder if it breaks down like that. I wonder, well, I wonder if, that's, if it's any example of that versus... Uh, look, I could get behind... Children. I could get behind it. Um, you know, if, if the influx of hot mums in my local area is because of... Um, <laughs> Dependence via student visas, then I then I support it. Yeah, yeah, I support it because you are paying a lot of money to talk to those women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I'm, I'm sponsoring their visa applications. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you work for LBC now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need the money <laughs> to cover my hot mum addiction. Uh, it doesn't go into your bank account and go no, straight to the straight, hot mum fund. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually set it up like that. But I think it's a, more tax efficient. It's a good line, yes, but probably not based in fact. No, I'm I'm sorry. I want to be clear. 
I'm not being like I know I, I know you don't think that that's true but I just I thought it was funny it is funny but it's also people but I think there's Nigel Farage can say things like that and people will be like people are bringing their mums over well some, I mean, some of them are like but, that, that is true yes but I imagine the vast majority bringing over their spouses and children yeah and if you're moving to if you're moving somewhere to go to university to do a postgraduate degree under any kind of degree as a mature student or someone with a family it does seem pretty reasonable to, and also given how That's important a, that is, an interesting question. Is it reasonable? Yes, sincere question. I think it is. G given, given how important universities are to the economy, yeah, and the importance of international students mm. to university fund, funding, to university funding, yeah. If someone who wants to do a postgrad, a PhD, over however many years, and you have a family, yeah, and you can't bring that family, you're not going to do it. Yeah. <sighs> No, I think it's a valid question. Like, I didn't, I didn't take my mum to uni. Yeah, because you were eighteen, Ollie. Yeah, but you went to Cardiff for three years. She yeah. didn't want to come. <laughs> Cardiff was very also, nice. Actually, I think, I think, I think speaking about someone, she could have slept on the floor. I think about, <laughs> I think about a mum. I think talking about someone's mum is like is. I don't silly. think we talk enough about mums. You've talked an awful lot about mums. I, I like, love mums. <laughs> yes, mums great. Well, you are. You, that didn't sound... I love my mum. Say it with some conviction. I love my mum. What about other mums? Whose? See, this is... This is concerning. I don't love mums in general. Yeah. Some of them have done some bad things. Yeah, but there's always a few bad apples. Doesn't mean the whole barrel's full of rotten ones. No, true, actually. Am I being racist towards mums? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mummies. okay. Yeah, I, I'm, abolish Mother's Day is my... Fuck. Yeah. Well, at least it would be a policy. Did you... Are your parents fussed about Mother's and Father's Day? I mean, it's one of them, isn't it? Because I don't think they would tell you that they were disappointed that you didn't send them a card. But I feel like you should send a card. My parents do not care. And I've never cared. Do they celebrate anything? They celebrate. My mum made the point. She says, "She says I don't want to get a present or flowers because you feel you have." She was like, "I would like it as a surprise or something." She is a stand-up woman. Yes, but see, that's what I'm talking about when I say I like mums. Yeah, <laughs> you got a great mum. Thank you. I've never met your mum, but I'm sure she's lovely. Yeah, she's top. Yeah, top tier mum. Absolutely. Top bins mum. <laughs> top bins mum. <laughs> She's got a cannon of a yeah, she has. Bends it into the uh, far post every she's actually, time. She's actually in the shoot magazine. She's <laughs> <laughs> Ollie's mum. <laughs> she doesn't have a name. <laughs> You're not born. <laughs> it's years off you being born. Um, but I think, the, I think the question about parent, bringing parents over... Mm. I think the more important discussion is about spouses and children. Look, I th I, yeah, look, I, th I think it's a valid. Um, people can argue to the counter, but I think it's a. Va I, th I think it's a valid position to say if you want to come um, to uni in, in the UK, like that's that's a decision you have to make. Basically, like if you want to come here, you're you're coming here to study. You have to choose between your family or doing that. I don't think it's particularly draconian to, to say that, to be quite honest with you. I just, well, I think, I, th I think it's cutting your nose off to spite your face. Yeah, I guess it it's, depends. It's, it's making the industry less attractive. If there was like a dearth of applicants, then maybe, but we've got some of the best unis in the world. I don't think that's the, the case. But we've got some of the best unis in the world and these people are part of the system. Mm. These people are making them the best investment, not just them. But just, they're part, they're I, part I, of the system. I wonder the ecosystem if you that's said you can't, you can't bring dependents. I wonder if you'd see it if the applications would dip. I think they would. Well, I guess we'll never know because it's hypothetical. Yes, because, because but you're in a hyper competitive global system and they could just go to somewhere that does let them bring their family. Mm. And, we need, and we need these people's funding. Yeah. God, it would be nice if um, someone pledged to abolish tuition fees that wasn't just the Greens. <laughs> what do you mean, just the Greens? Well, Labour's not going to do it. 
No. And Starmer promised it in his 2010 leadership election. 2019. Yes, sorry, 2019. Um, God, could you imagine? In 2010. Could you imagine 14 years of Keir Starmer <laughs> as the leader of the opposition? Uh, when he's DPP. <laughs> well, look, well, according to that YouGov polling, Lib Dems would be the opposition. We'd see Sir Ed Davey look, okay. under the opposition. Do you believe it? Do I believe it? When you look at the polls that are like uniparty state, like Chairman Starmer, do you believe it? I do. I, I am I'm a shill for polling. I, I, <laughs> I think po- I broadly think... Look, I like polling. Yeah. I like the polling that you do. Yes. <laughs> I like your polling. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Can, can we talk about that after we're finished talking about whether you got polls are accurate because I, bro- I think right, that's important. Sure. No, I look, so polls, I, look, I, I'm not undermining the science of polling. In fact, mm. I've, I've fucking, um, I've hosted an event at like an international conference about polling, in fact. Um, Did you? Yeah, Web Summit. Oh, and you're fucking jolly to Lisbon. Jolly? Yes. Jolly? Yes. Jolly? You didn't go to COP26 to go to Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You went to COP26. Yes, and I wanted to go to Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was very important to attend Web Summit. And interview Zara Larson. We didn't interview Zara Larson in the end. Um, <laughs> but you went with the intention. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we interviewed Gary Kasparov. And um, what else did we do? Well, we made the film about de- drug decriminalisation. Yes, but that was you didn't go for that. I, I actually kind of did go for that, to be honest with you. It was, you were going to Lisbon to Web Summit. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, we can do this while we're here. The film was good, to be fair. Thank you. But it was not, you didn't go with a pure heart. <laughs> <laughs> Open eyes, loving yeah. our hearts. No, we didn't. Um, so when do you want to talk about your poll? Oh, sorry, my point. Um, look, I think the polls will narrow. Uh, And I actually think reform is going to start to eat into Labour's vote. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think the Tory vote is actually a bit more stubborn um, than it's currently. Like, basically, basically I think um, like a 19% vote share for the Tories is much more effective than a 19% vote share for reform. Like, I think the Tories, because of first past the post, will return far more seats Let's. I mean, let's say they fucking clocked exactly the same number of mm-hmm. votes. I think you're still looking at like a hundred Tory MPs um, and maybe like two reform MPs, uh, which obviously is the part of the horror of first past the post. It'd be so good if the two reform MPs weren't the ones they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't. It's for, like that it guy who Farage. wants to make peace with the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Farage, Tice, Anderson, Ben. Is Ben Aviv running? Mm. Um, it wasn't any of them. It was like just some like they've, they've somehow won Shetland. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one of the biggest upsets if the Lib Dems lost up there. Uh, for a report, they somehow win that, yeah. and they just some fisherman <laughs> who they kind of found. Have they got a candidate up there? <laughs> they Let's must have a look. do. Let's have a look. I was looking at my local candidate, reform candidate, and he looks like an AI guy. His image doesn't look real. There is an AI guy standing somewhere. He's called like Steve AI. It's Brighton, I think Brighton. Yeah, it's Brighton. Yeah. So Brighton. So, the, so, the, so Brighton. The options are green or AI. That's a, that's a ball. Uh, Robert Smith. We have to talk. We have to mention all of them now. Um, <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but do we have to do the same for Brighton though? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, okay, I'll get, I'll get the Brighton one. <laughs> so, um, Robert Smith is standing for reform in Orkney and Shetland. Yep. I'm doing them in reverse alphabetical order because he's the last name on the list. Uh, Connor Savage is standing for the Labour Party. Shane Painter is standing for the Conservative and Unionist Party. Robert Leslie is standing for the SNP. Alistair Carmichael is standing for the Lib Dems. Uh, and Alex Armitage is standing for the Scottish Green Party. Okay, and I will just get the Brighton ones up. List of candidates. <clears throat> uh, that's for Brighton Kemp Town. I would like Brighton Pavilion. Um, you have for the Liberal Democrats, Ashley Ridley. For the Social Democratic Party, Carl Buckfield. 
for the Labour Party, Tom Gray, for the Conservative and Unionist Party, Sarah Victoria Webster, for Reform UK, Mark Francis Mulvihill. Do you think that's the guy from Made in Chelsea? <laughs> An independent called Steve AI, Shan Berry <laughs> for the Green Party, and Citizen Squith for the official Monster Raven Looney Party. Oh, nice. Um, nice that they've got some representation. Steve AI guy? Yeah. That's just the Black Mirror thing. You know when that, the cartoon beer runs for, for Parliament? I stopped watching Black Mirror, I think, after the second season. I think it was, I think it was quite an early episode, to be mm. fair. No, I don't remember that. No? No. It was like a blue bear. Tell me about it. There was a blue bear that was like wildly popular and they, it ran for Parliament. Do we have to read out all his opponents? <laughs> <laughs> and he somehow wins and, it's, and he has a very dispiriting experience with being an elected representative and he might kill himself I'm not sure sounds, about, sounds black mirror <laughs> <laughs> he has a dispiriting experience and then he kills himself <laughs> what's your favourite black mirror episode I think the, genuinely the first one, might, first be, one is might be one of the best yeah I like um, hang the DJ yeah I watched one of the more recent ones where there's the guy who like self harms on a live stream. Ooh, don't know that one. He has like a shard of glass that he. Oh, um, is that Daniel Kaluuya? Yes. Yeah, that I, was good. Yeah, that's quite an old one. This is how far I am off the pace of it because <laughs> I'm like that's the most, like, that's one of the most recent episodes I've watched. I think that's yeah. There's been like seven seasons. Is there too much Black Mirror? Do you think future generations will be like, this is just like Black Mirror in the same way that like next suit wearing Politico losers are like, this is just like the thick of it? Well, I think we, I've just, I, I've literally said this is just like Black Mirror yeah. in this episode about the Steve AI fellow. So are you an, are you a loser? I think so. Are you a neek? Yeah. Um, nice. How long will we be going, Sean? We're still nowhere near the Labour Party manifesto. Uh, Strong. Yeah, fucking, they, know, they get it. We should we should do it. Mm -hmm. We should do it. Um, are you going to offer a mayor culpa yet for getting your your Instagram sweepstake woefully wrong? Yet to be proved. Oh, you're holding out for some long tail so. yeah, engagement. I think so. Well, I, I trust our, our, that that Instagram account is absolutely popping off. It is. So like, if you're not on the politics show Instagram account, where the fuck you been? Yeah, follow us on Twitter as well. And TikTok. Yeah. Um, yeah, what did I say? I said there'd be... You said they'd get more than the Greens. I think you said 30, didn't you? I said 35. You said 35K. I said 35. Ava said 40. I, I don't know what he's laughing at. He's fucking... Yeah, you're all wrong. Your whole side of the desk was wrong. You're wrong as well. I'm closer than you are. <laughs> you're still wrong. So the, so the game is, we have to try and guess how many, how many likes on Instagram the Labour Party manifesto would get on the Politics Joe account, I thought it'd be much larger than it currently is. And Ollie seems to have taken, seems to have viewed this as a personal flaw of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just found it all, I found it funny that like, particularly him and Ava, you, look, I respect you mm -hmm. because you stuck to your guns. Mm -hmm. you, you maintained that it was going to be the most popular one. I didn't agree with you, but you know, um, I will fight and die for your right to disagree with me, Ed, Thank as you. a free speech absolutist. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what I was most disappointed by <laughs> what I was most disappointed by was there, there was a period of time when Sean and Ava mercilessly mocked you mm. for saying that and then rode in behind you yep and said no I agree with Ed yep the, like fucking Nick Clegg the second coming I agree with Ed it's going to get more likes than any of the others do you know what that is stolen valour yes I was there in the trenches. A shilling for Starmer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so reasonable. <laughs> Can't we just, it's just witty centrism. Mm. It's not witty. No. I it's think, no, it's ordinary hope. Ordinary hope? Yeah. Is that the phrase? That's... Okay, so... Um, I've interviewed a guy called... Two guys called Tom Baldwin and Mark Steers at their book, England, and it's like a, basically an alternate... It's, it's an alternative sort of uh, national story, if you like, trying to dispel seven myths about England uh, and their sort of alternative idea, rather than us being a swashbuckling, buccaneering, seafaring, 
English exceptionalism, uh, you know, birthplace of liberty stuff mm -hmm. that we just have ordinary hope. It's very like new labory curry football NHS. Right. We are all hopeful for it. I hope I have a nice curry tonight when I watch the football. W will you have a curry when you watch Scotland Germany? No, I don't think so. Where are you watching the game? In a pub. Which one? I'm, I'm obviously not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not fucking like Kylie Jenner. What are you? <laughs> no, but they're nuts. Who? We, no. Sorry. Okay. Just to, just to be clear. Just to be clear, you are concerned that if you announce which pub you're going to, <laughs> that you're going to be like mobbed by your fans. It's not mobbed. Is that what you're? Is that what you're saying? I'm very I'm just, I'm private. Oh yeah, no, look, I respect that. I think that's fair. I will you will you deign to tell us which region of London you're going to be? Uh, in? South London. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I, I. He will not go beyond I'm, half of the city. Oh, I'm. Ve I'm. Ve people are not. I'm not even. I'm not even like. I'm genuinely intentionally quite private about where I live and what I like to do mm. and stuff. My sister made a TikTok actually and it she she did it outside her window she lives in London as well. Mm. You could see the tube station she was at. Yeah. Or like that she lives beside and I was messaging her like you need to take that down. Mm. Cuz people 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 are mental. Mm. I think people especially in our line of work. Mm. I think people I think we should be really earnestly very careful about information that we divulge. You are very careful as well. So I don't know why you're making fun of me. <laughs> because I'm professionally and personally entitled to make fun of you. Yes, but it's a very serious thing. And I also It I is serious. Look, okay. No I, one I find get... no one find out where I live. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've sort of thrown down the gauntlet for them to dox you now. <laughs> someone once someone once came up to me and I was I was outside my flat yeah. and was like, oh hey like Love the podcast. I was like, thank you. I walked around the corner to pretend I wasn't going into my fan. And then doubled back. Okay, cool. I mean, if someone's a fan, I don't... What, are you concerned about like a baby reindeer type situation? Not specific. No, I suppose that's the worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want people to... Look, good OPSEC. We, 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 we support good OPSEC. Um, good drills. Can you hear that? Yeah, there's music outside. After the Tommy Robinson rally, yeah. when we were clocked, I was leaving the office and walked to the office and took off my glasses because I was like, I'm concerned about being followed. He's not grown that moustache. It's a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> like Scooby-Doo. <sighs> Should we talk about labour instead of my... Well, we, we could do. My personal security. We could talk about labour. Um, what were you... Drill. Say again? Drill. <laughs> what do you think about... What do you think about a mandatory retirement age for the House of Lords? I saw a lot of right-wing Twitter getting very agitated about that, that part of... Um, the manifesto, yeah. The like, reform democracy, modernise the Commons, um, retirement age for the House of Lords, votes at sixteen. They that, they were like, this is the most dangerous part of the manifesto. I like votes at sixteen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but if you're old enough to join the army and pay tax, what, what were you going to say? <laughs> that. <laughs> If an, if an MP is allowed to have sex with you, you should be able to vote. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to express your dissatisfaction at the experience and vote them out of the comments. If your ex-boyfriend is an MP and you're in sixth form, you, it should be well within your gift to get rid of them. I'm pretty sure that would be illegal now. That would be an abuse of power, wouldn't it? It's not illegal. Abuse of trust. It would be distasteful, absolutely. <laughs> it should be encouraged. <laughs> but I don't think it's illegal. It would illegal. be morally repugnant, 
but legally permissible. I don't know if it is legally no. permissible. Mm. I, don't, I don't want to Google age of consent. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they're all worried about that bit. I mean, that for me misses the broader point, which is that this this manifesto is a continuation of um, austerity. You know, as a percentage of spending as a percentage of GDP, uh, Labour's is so far the um, most restricted, 0.2% of GDP in terms of spending. I retweeted, I think it's um, Ben Chu, I think he's on BBC Verify, and he'd sort of done the sums and Tories are at like 0.6%, Lib Dems are at like 0.6%, Greens are obviously fucking like going gangbusters mm -hmm. and Labour is basically no change. Um, they're going to stick to the, fiscal, the Tories' fiscal rules. Fiscal drag is going to continue. That means more and more people, low earners moving into tax thresholds. No changes on capital gains tax. Um, no equalisation of cap, sorry of capital gains tax and, and um, taxing labour. No increase to corporation tax. Um, and essentially, the gamble is growth. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you don't, you, you, you don't need me to tell you that. You won't fucking shut up about it. Um, and the hedge is that their their reforms to you know planning and basically to get Britain building that that will give them the space to reverse uh, the Tory spending cuts that are coming down the track and are currently baked into um, the economics of everything, which I think is achievable by the way. Like I was chatting to um, my mate last night. And it's just like, build a reservoir. Like build, build one. Build a film studio. Build a data center. That fucking data center that got blocked because you could see it from the gantries over the M25. <laughs> like I genuinely, I, th I, th I think it's holy war. I think it's holy on war the on the NIMBYs. Like I, I don't... Normally, if we we're having a serious conversation about this, I'd be like, you know, well, there are parts of the green belt that we should build on. Um, you know, it's a bit, there are, there are aspects of gray belt, blah, blah, blah. No, burn the green belt down, mm -hmm. burn it down and build on top but of we it. We also have so much land. In yeah, the we, UK. we have a lot of land, yeah. That's not built on. Yes. Look, mate, Lundokyo, yeah. bring it on. High rises in Surrey. To Cundon. If, I think, I don't Personally, think, I think Londokio may be a bit nicer ring to it. I don't know. Well, well, did not, you just say Tokunden? Yeah. But I was just thinking we weren't, we weren't settled on it. It sounds too much like Cunny. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I thought last night? Tell me. Was it about Cunny? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was like, tomorrow I'm going to try and work out if I can see how I can see Quim on the podcast. <laughs> well, you got it. Yeah, that's fine. What's that fucking um, monologue in Gang Gangs of New York when um, I Daniel Day? New York. You haven't seen that? No, Ed. I keep meaning to. I only saw you're, the a, you're a student of film. That's not true. I, I famously not. No, but you you like art. I like art, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like films, I just like... That's what I mean. ...don't watch them very often. I don't mean you studied film. I did for a module at university. So what are you saying? What? <laughs> <laughs> but Gangs of New York wasn't the films. So what was right, I okay, to do? Fine. I had to watch Avatar. There's a very good monologue with Daniel day Lewis's character is talking to Amsterdam. And, he f and like, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't say anything. And Daniel day Lewis's character is like, what's your mouth gummed up with Connie juice? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> and also menacing. That is um, pretty thing. Yeah, look, uh, the, one of the encouraging things for any, for any sort of Labour politician who's coming into government now is that in the face of these boomers, the fucking pensioner, dicta pensioner dictatorship that we live in, that deny the opportunity to build houses, that deny the opportunity to do anything, right? We still kind of grow as an economy. And other countries are able to build things. Mm -hmm. So, like, just by the the logic of scanning across, it's like, if we actually get the country building, there should be a lot of productivity growth, growth of GDP per capita. Like, it is, it is within our gift. And so, if the planning reforms that they're going to bring in 
if if we build the first reservoir in England in 30 years, among other things, data centers everywhere, gentle density across fucking Surrey. Mm-hmm. Like I, I almost want to be vindictive about it and be like, no, not, you know, p- permitted, concentrated development, change the system from permissive to regulatory, planning permission, etc. I'm like, no, steamroller Guildford. <laughs> Send in the JCBs. You know how when you get out at like Lewisham... Elephant and Castle yep. or that part of East London and you're like oh my like what what the fuck has happened here and there's 20 story high mm-hmm. fucking do that to Guildford yep. punish them punish them punish them I don't think it's very that cause, I know there are NIMBYs elsewhere that will cause resentment I 100% want to do that I think what you actually you, I want vengeance no, no no do you know what you're going to I do I want Ray Wango you're, you're going to create a generation of NIMBY jihadists who will take revenge oh literal jihadists yeah, as in like when the US intervened in the Middle East. You create oh, a new generation of martyrs. Absolutely. That's what you, so need, you, think that's like, what you need to consider. <laughs> pensioners are going to be like blowing themselves up in planning no, they're, no, 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 they're grandchildren. Oh, they're kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But their kids will have somewhere to live. Yeah, but you know, it's nimbyism's a genetic thing. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely would relish single combat with a nimby. Which one? Pick one. Send your best man. I bet they got a good one. James Cracknell or something like that. He's standing to be an MP. Yeah, I'd, I'd back myself against Crackers. He's an Olympic athlete. Yeah. <clears throat> he did have that accident though recently, didn't he? <laughs> did it, was that it? Let's check. <laughs> I'm not sure that was it. I'm pretty sure he like got knocked off his bike, didn't he? There's, I think there's, I think he had a brain injury. But I think I think there is one that did have a brain injury. I'm just not sure it was James Cracknell. Yeah. Oh, was it? He damaged his frontal lobe. It changed his personality. Oh, he's developed a short temper. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um. For what you're saying about the Labour Manifesto. Yeah, let's try and talk about that. Have we considered... Keir Starmer's proven himself to be a dishonest man. Yep. What if he's lying about this as well? And he's going to introduce introduce a sweeping reform of the country and he's just lying about it. Look, uh, yes, okay. Possible. The the last uh, election that he won, the leadership election, he and Labour together with some uh, dodgy funding, focus grouped and did inter- ran internal polling throughout the Labour Party from 2018 onwards. Um, they, uh, Baldwin said on, Tom Baldwin, who was here talking about England, said the other day that they started his leadership campaign in 2018. Um, and that they didn't think they were gonna win in 2019. And that, by the way, throws, I think, a great deal of light onto the adoption of the second referendum position. Mm-hmm. Um, when it looked like Labour was polling upwards. Anyway, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, uh, his complete... Telling the Labour membership whatever they wanted to hear. So, I mean, on the point I just made about tax, you know, uh, redistribution, a redistributive tax system, raised to income tax, I think is in the top 5% of earners Mm -hmm. in adherence with their socialist principles. Take your pick, abolition of tuition fees, nationalisation of key, key industries, blah, blah, blah. And Rigby fucked him on that, didn't she? Um, where she was like you've ditched most he he said in her, her interview with him oh I've kept most of them and she was like you've ditched six or seven of them and there's ten so obviously most doing some heavy lifting there um, he told the Labour membership whatever they wanted to hear to get into power so you could make the argument he's telling the public whatever they want to hear to get into power and they'll get in and go whoa 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 like the mechanic mm-hmm. pops the hood oh it's what but when you go in for the MOT yeah happy days you come back at the end of the day oh it was way worse in there than we were expecting you now owe us 700 quid or whatever um, he could do that but it would <laughs> the problem is you have no mandate to govern like if you go if you come into power and I know that most <coughs> if you actually sort of compare governments with their manifestos, the track record isn't great. You know, uh, learned observers of British politics will remember that the Conservative Party in 2019 promised to not raise taxes and we ended up with the highest tax burden. 
um, in the post-war period. But you just, you, 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 first of all, name, name one political party that has been more radical in government than it was in opposition. I don't think you can, mm -hmm. because usually the weight of power, uh, the influence of the civil service usually tempers your capacity to do things. And second of all, if you got in, if you got into office, it's one thing to like promise the Labour, le the Labour membership, you're going to be a socialist and then be a Blairite. Yep. It's another thing to tell the electorate, I am a centrist, and then get in and be like, fucking jokes on you. Um, we're opening gulags, you know? It's, <laughs> <laughs> so well, the collective farm with I you. Did, I didn't think they would do the gulags. No, I, no that's I maybe don't, like it. That's maybe a second, second term. term. Yeah, yeah, that's a second term. Thing. That's a second term thing. Yeah. Maybe just like. No, but they're, they're, gen they're a gen genuine, you know, that's mass protest movements at that point. And that's, you don't have a mandate to do that, to do an about turn like that. Mm -hmm. There's serious questions about like the democratic legit legitimacy of your government at that point. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't put it past him. No. I think that was the point I was trying to make. What did you like in the Labour manifesto? Um, tax and private schools. Yeah. I think is good. I actually think like the laws reform, mandatory re retirement. Mm, good. At 80. Yeah, I think thin it down. Thin, thin it, it down. And also, if you're in your 80s, I don't think you should be in public service. Yeah, I don't think you should drive. Case by case basis, I think, yeah, driving. Yeah, you should retake your test, yeah. My grandmother drives and she's 89 and she's f absolutely fine. Well, if she can pass a test, happy days. Yeah, so I'm not sure if she would like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, what else? Close loopholes for non-DOM tax avoidance. Yeah, That's fine. Just a nice, a fun one. Windfall tax. Windfall tax, yeah. A crumb of taxation. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, well, there is taxes. There's no, and also this, the line about no tax rises for working people. It does, I think that does leave wiggle room for reducing a capital gains tax when they're government. Uh, depends, doesn't it? On well, if you run your own business, mm -hmm. you and you're not self-employed. If you set up a company, then you pay capital. Oh no, wait, sorry, talking about. I keep. I've, that's the second time in this podcast I've got corporation tax and capital gains tax mixed together. Really? You didn't notice the first no, time. No, sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> more for me, I guess. I've outed myself. Um, um, yeah, no, true, true. The the, the the arguments around capital gains tax. Yeah. Um, the argument is, it's, it's like... I'll tell you what I do like. <clears throat> Doubling onshore wind. Yeah. Quadrupling offshore wind and tripling solar power by 2030. Yeah. Like... That's good stuff. That, um... I, I am, as much as the next man, like to hammer Keir Starmer, mm -hmm. that the clean, clean power by... Clean energy superpower by 2030, that's like genuinely... That, those are radical ideas. Yeah, it's transformative. Yeah. And the, I know it's not 28 billion quid, but again, if they grow the economy, then presumably it will be more cash. Um, you know, the, uh, the National Wealth Fund, Great British Energy, those are all, that's good stuff. It's, it's, it's also, very good stuff. There, there's, there was nothing, the journalists were complaining, there was nothing, there's no rabbits, so they don't have a headline. Yeah. But I think the message Labour are trying to convey is, there's nothing massive or flashy. There is a series of small ideas that will, as a unit, as a cohesive platform of policies, will increase the quality of life mm. for people in this country. Just competence, basically. Yeah. Or just like, and I think that's, I, I think I keep saying this, but that's all they need is just to be, people to be hopeful that they will do a better job, that these things will make people's lives better than they have been under the 14 years of Conservative government and there's an inkling of hope, and then the vote for the Labour Party. Mm. All, Sunak, all Starmer needs to be is one better than Sunak. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just underwhelmed by it, you know? But I suppose you said yesterday on the desk, you're like, well, there's nothing new here. Like, if this had been kept totally under wraps, and but, you'd seen it in that, and you'd seen it yeah. that way, if you'd seen the thing about, um, large reform or a well fund or anything like that as a surprise I wonder how you'd feel about it well I, I actually understand as well the like rolling of the pitch that they've been doing because the entire thing there you know their entire thing whether it's to big business um, to the electorate is 
No more Liz Trust shit. Like we are going to provide. What what scares off investors? Uncertainty. You know, the fact that the Conservative Party has essentially just sort of been lurching from different economic program to another to another. You know, boosterism uh, under austerity, boosterism, fucking like Hayek on meth with um, Liz Truss, and now technocratic fiscal conservatism under Rishi Sunak. You know. That's not a recipe for if you're if you're trying to chart like business investment. Let's say you mega corporation looking at five ten year cycles, you're going to come out in a rash looking at that. The Labour Party strategy is very much here. It is. This is what it's going to be. Welcome back. And that's kind of what I'm talking about when it's like if you're just competent, mm. you just build things. It might work. They have if the economy grows, it works. But famously. It's not necessarily within the gift of the government of the day entirely to grow the economy. Mm -hmm. So it could all backfire. Mm -hmm. And if and if it doesn't get growing, then it is austerity. It's the continuation of austerity. And I think it's about 20 billion quid's worth of cuts. Happy days. Could be ugly. Should we do our polling? Fucking yes! Oh my God! Yes, let's finish on that. Excellent. Uh, we had some polling an MRP poll we did yeah 2000 what was the sample size 2000 people when was the field work conducted on Monday great uh, from prolific polling company shout out prolific the only polling company that would take these questions <laughs> <laughs> the only ones that uh, let us do this can you imagine like board meeting head of digital stands up and is like um, we've experienced 10,000 times higher social engagement this week <laughs> than at any previous point in our history. Yep. Uh, and what, what's behind that, Jeff? Well, tell him, Ed. Well, we asked some, some questions that we thought we really wanted to know the answer to on polling. We didn't want to know, are you going to vote for a reform? <laughs> <laughs> we asked the serious questions. Uh, Such as? Have you ever said, God save the king, earnestly? No. Neither have I. Shall we see what people said at large? Yes. Shall we see how, what Brits feel? Yeah. 80% um, of Brits say they've never said, God save the king, earnestly. Admittedly, they have had a limited time window, haven't they? It's only been about two years to squeeze it in. It's a long time. Yeah, but we haven't been at war. He's, he said cancer. Yeah, but I wouldn't appeal to a higher power to save him. Not least because I'm a godless fuck, but... Yeah. That's, that's my problem. Like, I can't say it because... I think the only time I would say it is if I was, like, at Agincourt. <laughs> if you're transported back in time. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, yeah, so 80% say they've never. Then we also asked, uh, would you show a picture to the barber and ask for Keir Starmer's haircut? And the results, only 2% of people say they would. I believe that. Yeah. That I genuinely believe that. Because that's that. there's a limited number of dads who have hair that then also like his haircut. It scans, 2% scans for me. I think his haircut is one of the best things about him. I mean, then a damning with faint praise kind of way. Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Not like, I like his hair. It's too brill creamed for me. Mm. I think for a man in his 60s, he's... Well, he's still got a hairline, so, you know, you have to respect he's not, it. He's not losing that. That is up. Would, you, would we call him a dilf? No, I don't think we would. Really? I don't think he's sexy. No, he's not. No, he's not sexy. But I think as far as like hot dads in the local area go <laughs> the ones married to your hot mums yes yeah he's not he's not like he's not got like he's not daddy no Starman. and he's definitely not zaddy no so I think that's the equivalent that's that's the metric of being a dilf hmm anyway then Rishi Sunak's D-Day headache that just won't go away would you have said go save the king at D-Day 
No. Mm. I would have said, fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah. And then probably shat myself. And then probably... <laughs> and then good. probably get shot in the face. Yeah. yeah. That would not have been a good day. Uh, we asked... <laughs> 2,000 people. <laughs> Stopping the beaches. Glib commercial radio. Bad day. Bad day at the office, that. Uh, um, that was like Jeremy Vine on radio too. Omaha Beach, bad day. Uh, I've had bit of case of the Mondays. <laughs> uh, we asked 2,000 people, do you think Rishi Sunak should have to join the army, whether he likes it or not? And the results came back. 44% of people said he should. That's I, I that, that surprised me actually because I think it would be higher. I thought it would be higher as well. Because it's like you want everyone else to fucking go and do it. So pull your finger out. Yep. Yep. I, I think it's also punishment. Maybe people are just pacifists. Oh, interesting. This is actually quite good. 57% uh, of people who voted for the Brexit party in 2019 think he should. Okay. So it's people with a more authoritarian streak. Yes. And a majority of Labour voters as well. What's the Labour figure? 54. 2019 Labour voters. What about Tories? Tories, 34%. They, yeah, they don't want their leader in the army. No. no that's they, what it's, yeah. he's, it's, you can't lead the campaign if you're in the Brecon Beacons doing some trading. What's the new name for the Brecon Beacons? It's in the Welsh language. It is in the Welsh language. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It felt like a long week. Huh? I think it's felt like a long... It's been a fucking long week. I, I think it's been a lot of... It's been a long week. When I sat down to watch the ITV debate last night, I was like, um, surely not again. We've just done one of these. Yeah. How about we wrap up this podcast, mm -hmm. we go upstairs and publish your Boston piece, Yep. and then we get the fuck out of Dodge. How do you feel about that? What's Dodge? Is that a line? Is that from a film I've not seen? Blues Brothers, isn't it? Yes, I think you're right. I've seen half of that. It's probably, oh, probably an homage. <sighs> okay. I'm suggesting it's from a Western. Ollie Johnson's chiming in. Oh, we should also clarify. Um, everyone thought when Ollie said goodbye to Shawnee on the podcast, Shawnee's not Sean. Mm. Sean still remains gainfully employed at the company. Shawnee has left. And we, miss, we will miss her terribly, but Sean is here. We would not miss him, is the thing. It, it appears to have just, just have been an idiom in, oh. in the frontiers. Get out of Dodge is used to describe leaving a place with an uncomfortable or dire circumstance. It originated from Dodge City, Kansas, specifically from events during 1870s Dodge City. What happened then? During that decade, Dodge City was a cow town. Or an incorporated... <laughs> <laughs> the only resident for cows. <laughs> or an incorporated settlement where cowboys would bring cattle up from Oklahoma Indian Territory and Texas to the railroads to ship to the butchering markets in the east. Dodge City became a boom town, or a town that quickly grows prosperous after incorporation. Because of this, Dodge became the most infamous and dangerous cow town in the Midwest. It earned these descriptors and its commonplace phrase from all the rambunctious and deadly men who ventured in. <laughs> Holy shit. They've taken some liberties, the sunflower, in writing this. <laughs> how, do you, <laughs> how do you feel that they rambunctious and deadly? That'd be a good hinge prompt if anyone's... Rambunctious and deadly. D describe yourself in three words, rambunctious and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be a good way to signal to other people that you're a Paul Joe head as well. It would. Is it, do, do you think that should be the official Paul Joe line? Rambunctious and deadly. Listen to Paul Joe podcast, we're rambunctious and deadly. <laughs> the good, the bad and the ugly. <laughs> They're rambunctious and deadly. <laughs> The young and the restless. Do you think we should do Plaid Cymru's manifesto? Yeah. Well, they asked for it. They did ask for it. Yeah, they, I thought yeah. It was a bit beggy, I thought, but it was a bit... But, you know. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> we owe it to them. Well, I mean, look, we're going to do the SNP, so we should do Ply Cymru. And then every party in Northern Ireland. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> just making Sean do like the TUV. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see before Ed Nigel Farage betraying the TUV? Yeah. That was very funny. It was, yeah. Just being like, that, that was such a, just sh- illustrates reform as a party. Reform has these l- long-standing commitments, not long-standing, a commitment to the TUV. Yeah. <laughs> Nigel Farage walks in. I'm a DUP man myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Jim Shannon man myself. Uh-huh. Was Jim Shannon one of them? He's a DUP guy. No, but was he one of the ones that he specifically said, Ian Paisley Jr. Oh, did, he, did he name them? Yeah, yeah, he said these guys, and then the interviewer was like, they are the DUP. Was <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, he's making Tice dance for him. <laughs> <laughs> Tice in the cup chair watching him burn up <laughs> all these commitments oh. Farage reading through that mental list of proposed man like abandoning the Starmageddon line yeah. we, we've not had for, heard Farage say Starmageddon no, all he said last night was exploding immigration every question mm-hmm. every question in the debate exploding immigration a Starmageddon of immigration mm. the con-socialist twins that was funny reform had all these great lines that have just been abandoned because someone, to the wayside. someone with a bit of political nous is, is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually quite, like, I would have been very curious to have seen a Tice reform party in a general election as like a spectacle. Well, you got it for like a week. No, but I, I would like to see the results. Mm. Well, it wouldn't be what's happening now, that's no. for sure. What a week, Edward. Absolutely. What a week. Yeah. Hell of a week. Should we um, plug old videos for people to watch some, okay. some goodies from the olden days yeah what, what are you thinking um, is there anything you there's an old piece that actually funnily enough Sean sent to me um, I think it was like two days before the general election was like we should do pieces like this when the election happens oh was it the working men's club one yeah yeah that was good um that was a good one. I can't remember what the, the the headline of the video is. It's like if you if you order the videos on the YouTube page by like earliest first mm-hmm. and head back, it's like the thumbnail text is like where have all the jobs gone? Um, I like that. That was good. Haven't liked anything we've made since. No, that's fair. It's been dog shit. No, that was good. Um, oh, we should uh, watch the video we made in Leicester Square. Yeah. For the last Euros. We went and interviewed Scotland fans in Leicester Square, and I think it's actually one of the best videos we've made. <laughs> I think it is. Do you remember how it looks? <laughs> <laughs> it can't be perfect. Sorry, for, sorry that you hired a videographer and didn't train them. <laughs> you told me you know how to make videos. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. There's There's no you way needed I... glasses. There's... You needed glasses. <laughs> There's no Stop way. Stop it. There's no you way. Didn't you didn't have said... glasses at the time. You said... needed them. If you said, do you know how to use a camera, which I think you should have fucking asked, I would have said, yeah, I would have said no. <laughs> this is like when a cat. Yeah, on when... the test shoot, you said, change the aperture. And I said, what's that? <laughs> That's your fault, pal. This is like when you have a water spray thing for a cat that misbehaves. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna drill me. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> matron. <laughs> What's the close up on Ed like? Is it good? Oh, is there a close up on me? Is that one? Oh, there? this entire time. Yeah. Oh, mad. Sorry, I come back. Here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ed, it's been a pleasure to serve alongside you. Absolutely. Should we go down with the ship? Yeah. Should we delete the channel? <laughs> <laughs> Should we just delete the channel? Yeah. Let's delete it. See you is there, the- is oh. there a two factor authentication thing on that, do you think? Do you, I'm, do you look, like two hands on the button? Fucking Mr. Opsec over here. What, do you, what, what are you talking about? 
I'm going to tell people if we have two-factor authentication. <laughs> yes, we have two-factor authentication no, on all of our accounts. No, what are you talking no, about? No, no. If, we, if I went to delete the channel, yeah. would it need approval from another admin? Which channel? Politics Show, like YouTube. You're not a super admin. Okay. Probably sensible. Because I'm a resentful man. Sick. That was 